Coach, the season comes to a close. You go to the OVC tournament, take on Moorhead State on Wednesday night. And, and your team battled against Moorhead State in the first round of the tournament, falling 73-66. Talk about that game, Coach. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought we played uh, hard. I thought we competed. You know, in the OVC tournament, the whole level of play is just different. Everything's different. Um, every cut is harder. Every foul is harder. The games are more physical. And I thought we answered the bell. I thought we got to that level. Um, I thought we were more physical. I thought we played harder, cut harder and everything. I just thought we were a little out, man. We needed one or two more big guys inside. And uh, playing without Miles hurt us just from two standpoints. One, he's our security blanket. We could throw it to him any time we want. He can get a bucket, mm -hmm. and we couldn't do that in that game. And the other thing is uh, rebounding the ball. Yeah, he only gets eight a night, but he requires so much attention from everyone else that sometimes it takes two guys getting to him to keep him off the glass, which will free one of our guys up. Right. And, uh, that's that's where we kind of miss One of the things the he does, too, Coach, he forces the opponents to commit a lot of fouls. I mean, you got into a bonus a lot earlier than your opponents this season because Miles was drawing fouls inside. Yeah, I mean, th there's no question. He's a hard guard, and, and, and I've had discussions with many different people about it. Uh, he's just a tough guy to cover because – Sometimes he initiates the contact, and sometimes the contact is initiated on him. Uh, sometimes when he's jockeying, when they're jockeying for a position, you could probably call a foul every time either on him or on the defense. So he's just a tough, tough guy to, to referee, and he's a hard guard. When he does catch it, you got two choices. You either let him score or foul him. Otherwise, you know, if you let him score, he would probably get 40. And if you foul him, you're going to have to make him earn it at the line, which is probably the best thing. But he's, he's in 11 years of being in the league, you just talk about tough, tough guys to guard and tough guys to referee, man. He, he's it. He really is. Yeah, he is. And he's young. That's mm -hmm. what's amazing. He's only he'll be entering his junior season. And I don't even know if he knows how good he could be, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I think sometimes he uh, – He's not as engaged as he needs to be in each game. Mm -hmm. um, the games that he's really, really engaged, it's pretty fun to watch because there's nothing anybody can do. Coach, there were even games this season, and, and we had talked about this, and I can't specifically remember the games where he almost he decided, I'm going to rebound tonight, and then he would get 14 rebounds. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and again, that was the whole thing. There's no reason why he couldn't get 12 or 14 every night. Mm -hmm. but, but with him, it's just about being engaged. You know, sometimes he kind of – decided, hey, I'm, I'm going to take this these, these next five possessions off with rebounding the ball. And it showed in his stats. You know, there's no reason why he should come into halftime and have two rebounds. But there were some games like that where he came into halftime and only had two or three. And that's just being into the game, being engaged. And sometimes he let that he let his focus wander a little bit. And and to do well against Moorhead State, you needed that post presence. And we would have thought it would have been B.J. McLaughlin. He gets hurt in the game. And only plays nine minutes. So, I mean, your back's against the wall again with that. Yeah, kind of the story of the year, man. If it wasn't one thing, it was it was something else. Um, uh, kind of a freak thing when B.J. just rolled his ankle. I mean, it could happen any day. It could happen any day in practice. It could happen walking out here, stepping off the sidewalk. I mean, it just happened. So, again, we had to call on other guys. Mopo stepped in and played good for his five or six or seven minutes. And, Jeremy did the best he could for the time he was in. But, but at the end of the day, uh, we were just outmanned, and I think it showed. UT Martin falls to Moorhead State, 73-66 the final. Uh, ultimately, Belmont wins the OVC tournament. It was a good tournament. Did you see the Belmont-Murray game at all Saturday? Yeah, we did. We watched it um, in, the, in the James household. Oh. All four of us kind of sat down, and, and uh, <laughs> obviously Sadie and Claire had no clue. Sadie was trying to watch uh, Little Rascals and <laughs> – uh, Nemo, Finding Nemo, and uh, I was trying to watch basketball, and uh, Danny was trying to watch something else. But she finally settled on basketball, and then Sadie kept taking the remote and trying to turn it. So oh, it was just a big yeah. ordeal. But uh, needless to say, I did. I watched the game. Very entertaining. What did you think about it from a basketball standpoint? I thought it was very entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that, that late in the game when Murray was winning, um, the free throws were huge. Uh, I thought there were some times when when Belmont needed to get the ball to a certain place or a certain player, and they didn't do it, and it hurt them offensively. But at the end of the day, they had a really good guard, and they put the ball in his hands, and they basically said, hey, go make a play, mm -hmm. and he did. Uh, I, I thought Murray opened the door for them to do that. Uh, I thought there were opportunities for Murray to close the door, and they just, for whatever reason, they didn't. And uh, there was a couple turnovers late. 
Cannon had a big turnover oh. at the end of the uh, at the end of the, the the overtime, which which was heartbreaking. That and, hurt me too, me. coach, because. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's like Chris Webber, kind of. Not that it's significant, but a lot of um, fans will always remember him for that, and he's a lot more than that one play. Yeah, and and that's it's funny you say that. that's exactly what I what I told Nanny, and I, and I've told everybody. You know, he's done so much for the OVC, for Murray State, for that community. Uh, it's a shame that when they think back on his career, they won't think about the twenty one hundred points or uh, the thirty six he put on Moorhead in overtime. Uh, they won't think about all the great accolades that he has they'll think about the turnover he had at the, in, in, in overtime in the ovc tournament and it's a shame that it's that it came down to that you know kind of the bill buckner thing with boston mm-hmm. is the same deal bill buckner's a great player for those who n- know baseball he made a mistake it happened but that's what he'll be remembered for and isaiah cannon is so much more than dribbling off his foot late in the overtime he's so much more than that he's a, such a better person than that and he's a, such a better player than that you would hope that as time goes on, people will start to realize him for what he was, and that's a great player, and not realizing for uh, the mistake that he made. Will we see him at the next level? You'll see him somewhere at the next yeah. level. I, I would imagine he'll get invited to, if he doesn't get drafted, which I think he might, late second round or, or, or late first round, early second, somewhere in there is what they're saying. Uh, you'll see him somewhere at an NBA camp on an NBA team. Just because of the fact that he's got a great feel for how to play, he's strong, and he's got a true position. Right, uh, he's truly a point guard. Yeah, he's a truly point, he's a point guard. That's what he is. And, and the NBA is a scoring league, and he can definitely do that. And, and so I think you'll see him in the NBA somewhere at some point. Watch, it, watch him, and I got to see him in Nashville. We stayed and watched the games. But it, it amazes me how, off, how well he handles the ball and, and would switch directions. To me, that's what I, stood out to me as a coach. Is that what you see out of him? Yeah, I mean, he's got it on a string. And, and what I mean by that and is – And it's funny is, that, that he turns it over there, and I say that about him, but the turnover is the thing. But go ahead. Well, he, he's got the ball on a string. And, again, what I mean by that is I mean, he, he can handle it through any type of situation. Yeah. And he can can handle it in pressure. He can handle it in a trap, and he's quick with it. He can stop with it on a dime and change a direction, which I think is what makes him really good. Um, sometimes he gets a little lackadaisical with it. He gets a little too cool, mm-hmm. quote unquote, with the ball. And I think that's what you saw happen at the end of the overtime. He just got a little too lackadaisical, too cool. His mind was racing, probably a couple steps ahead to say, "Hey, man, I'm gonna take this guy off the bounce, get him to my spot, make a shot. We're gonna win the game." But before that happened, you got to handle the ball. Uh, right. And uh, I, I just think his mind got going a little too fast. But the things that make him special to me are one, his strength. Mm-hmm. Um, to his quickness and his ability to shoot it with no space. You know, you can be up in his chest from baseline to baseline. He can stop from 40 feet with you in his chest and make a shot. That's not only demoralizing for a coach. It's deflating to a defense. If you're the guy guarding him, man, I mean, your heart's getting broken 10, right. 15 times a game. Yeah. Sooner or later, you're going to break down. Because you say, you, what am I going to do? Yeah, as a coach, <laughs> you can say it as many times as you want. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. Tough shot. Tough shot. But sooner or later, as a competitor, you start to get down on yourself. What do I have to do to make this guy miss a shot? And I think that's, that's one thing that, that he did to defenses. But when you're strong and you're quick and you don't need space to get it off, you can score a bunch of points at, at this level. And I think you saw that. You know, uh, not that I was really pulling for someone, but if Murray wins that game, two teams go from the OVC to the NCAA tournament. I thought that would have been really cool. Uh, Coach Prohm said in the post game that he wished the OVC got more respect nationally. You agree with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you always want to be respected throughout the the country. Um, I, I think with those two good teams playing in the final and, and as good a year as Belmont had, I think that that respect is coming. Um, but I still think that everybody else in the league's got to continue to get better. That's my question. What's it going to take? Yeah, what's it going to take for people to say, "Oh, yeah, the OVC." Uh, I, well, I, I think it's going to take that the other you know, ten teams step up their their game. I mean, I mean, we, you got to have more teams than two who are having you know, winning records in the league and 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 having winning twelve and four or whatever everybody else was. I mean, I think everybody else in the league's got to continue to improve recruiting. I think everybody else in the league's got to continue to improve uh, winning non conference games, and that in turn will heighten the RPI of our league, which in in the whole scheme of things is what everybody looks at. I, mean, I think it, even if 
even if Murray wins that game, I still think personally it's hard for Belmont to get in because of the RPI, overall RPI of the OVC and the and the perception. People pull up ESPN and they look at the OVC scores and they see five and eleven, five and eleven, seven and nine, eight and eight, and then they see four teams who are above the five hundred line. Well, then that that doesn't bode well for our RPI, and it takes somebody who really, really knows basketball to know that the OVC is one of the toughest leagues in the country, mm-hmm. player by player. You know, from on a player to player standpoint, I would put our league up with any other mid-major league in the country. But you don't know that unless you watch us every night, unless you watch enough tape. I agree, and I guess the last three years, the OVC team has won a first-round game in the NCAA tournament. Is that right? Because uh, uh, more Murray, Morehead, and then Murray won before that. Yeah, they beat I Vanderbilt. Say four. They, okay, I four. Say now. Last four years. Four. Uh, Murray won, then Morehead, Morehead, Morehead won in the in the play-in game, mm-hmm. and then Murray beat Vandy, and then Morehead beat uh, Louisville. Louisville, and then, and then Murray won and, last and then year. Murray won Even last though they were year. a higher seed. Yeah. That yeah. still speaks well for the OVC. I think it does too. I mean, I, I, again, I I can't say enough of just how competitive our league is on a night by night basis. You know, the athleticism of our league has gotten better since I've been here. Um, there, any team can beat any other team on any given night. I mean, and, and well, that showed. You beat Eastern Kentucky. Yeah. You beat Murray State. Yeah. To me, those are two of the top three teams. Well, maybe four if you throw Tennessee State in there. Those are two of the top four teams in the league. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think there's any question about that. And 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 again, our league it shows that. I mean, we went on the road and played a tough Murray team who who was in the finals and had a chance to win and beat them. We went on. We played EKU, who was at our place, who was again I think the third best team in the league. And beat them, dominated them for a whole game, and I mean that says a lot about our lack of consistency. Yeah. But at the end of the day, but, I think what it says is that any team in our league can beat any other team because the league it has some talent to it. And you know, I'm convinced if we have Miles Taylor in the lineup in the Moorhead State game, you possibly have a different outcome, and then you have a chance to win on Thursday night. Yeah, I mean, I think it's different. You know, not not from a rebounding standpoint. We got so beat bad. We got beaten so badly on the boards. But just from an offensive standpoint, some of those shots that we took that may have been tough shots wouldn't be as tough because we could throw it in there. And I mean, he changes the whole complexion of a game. He changes the whole complexion of how other teams have to guard us, which is a, a definitely a benefit to us. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about the season overall and look ahead to next year with Coach Jason James as we talk from Snappy Tomato Pizza on the Skyhawk Sports Network. <laughs> 